Um, so come on, come on. Let's, let's gather up, gather up. Um, so what I'd like to have everyone do is just actually go um, around and introduce yourselves. Um, yeah, if you can get that mic on on that side. Noa Akitaru, Chariq Se Chariq, Tatasa Asawita, Tatasa Bunky Echohawk. Just an honor to be here. I'm just a just an artist, just working here. Uh, my name is Ben Alex Dupree. I, I don't speak as well as he does in Pawnee. Uh, uh, the, the director of the uh, Bunky Echohawk. Thank you for coming to this work in progress. I'm Eric Spink. I'm the co-producer and co-director of the film on Christian Scott. Um, I'm Amitav Josie, and I'm the co-director on the Christian Scott film. My name is Ray Santisteban. I'm the director of a film, The Beginning is Near, The Art of Vincent Valdez. Hi, I'm Monique. I'm with these guys. <laughs> Hey, Sofian. I'm uh, Sofian Khan, uh, co-director of that joint. Uh, I'm Joseph Patel, the co-director of the Meat Con. Thank you again. Welcome to all of you. Um, I do want to say before we kind of jump into the conversation piece that um, these five shorts that you saw tonight are part of a series called Masters in the Making, which actually will have eight short films, um, and also th uh, the film about Jamaica Osorio, the first film that uh, screened, uh, she's the um, native Hawaiian poet, uh, is directed by Kiara Lacey, who could not join us um, from Hawaii today, unfortunately. And then we have three other films that are still in the lab, um, in the edit process. Um, one is being directed by filmmaker Malika Zuhali Warao. Uh, there's another one directed by Ligaya Romero, who I believe is here in the building, uh, all the way in the back, raise your hand. Um, and then uh, the final piece is uh, directed by filmmaker Elisa Blount Moorhead. So there are three other films in the series, but enough about that. Um, I want to, before we get into a conversation with all of you, I did want to just ask one question to the filmmakers um, to get us warmed up. All of these pieces delve really deeply into the process um, and the motivations of the artists that you chose to feature. And I'm wondering if you could share with us a little bit of what your process um, is as a filmmaker and the why you chose these particular artists to profile in these films. So who wants to go first? Dale. <laughs> um, that's a lot. Uh, I'll start with why we chose Anik. So um, Sophie and I, uh, I think when you grow up brown with immigrant parents, they don't understand when you want to go into creative professions. <laughs> and you fight against that, and it's a part of the identity. <clears throat> and so sort of almost we have like a, a South Asian rehab group of South Asian creatives that meet once a month um, to support each other, tell each other about each other's projects, and also just to sort of address topics that we feel like we want to talk about as young brown creatives. And from one of those meetings, we've sort of came up with the idea of doing a short film on Anique, whose career Sophie and I have really uh, been a fan of, uh, not just as, as a musician, but as a person. And so this film was sort of born out of those meetings. And I, I, I have a, a particular affection for it because um, I like the camaraderie of those meetings and, those, and that support network, um, just being a creative. I think you said it all. Um, so we, we started uh, thinking about this project because we both really loved Christian's music. And I think what the real turning point for us was is when we, one of the first conversations when we sat down with him and uh, he, he said this, which he says in the film, um, if you're not working towards healing, then you're part of the problem. 
and and for us that just kind of became so much more than just the music. It just became kind of this lens that we started looking at all of his artwork through and seeing how he and his family have done so much work to just bring people together. And, and for us, that was really something powerful. And just from stylistically, um, uh, we had, we've collaborated on a lot of projects with um, Art21 and had documented uh, visual artists before, but we haven't done much with a, a music artist. Um, and maybe you could say something on that. But for us, that was very different to learn for us to give the music the patience that it needed, um, as opposed to uh, you know, when we maybe have not given uh, visual art as much time as we had to give for, for music. Uh, yeah, I mean, Christian's music is just so, I don't know, it's very captivating, and you could just watch it. And Eric and I, uh, you know, we looked at a lot of jazz films. I mean, jazz and documentary have had a long history, and so uh, one of the films we watched was uh, Jazz on a Hot Summer Night, I think that's what it's called. It's it's beautiful. It was shot in the 50s at the Newport Jazz Film um, Jazz. Uh, festival it's uh, in color and uh, you know we tried to as much as we could try to capture the essence of those types of films in this piece yeah um, yeah basically when um, I read the description for what they were asking for like we all had to write proposals but I was reading it, I'm like man this is Vincent Valdez they're asking for something about Vincent Valdez and so I called him like five minutes later I said Vincent we have to apply to this let's apply can I make a film about you and, and if you look at the film, there's a lot of different people talking about him, which is a little different from the other films. And part of it is he's from San Antonio and he makes his art, but in that place, and I'm not from there, I'm from California, but they, I think a lot of folks are trying to, they put him in boxes, like he's from San Antonio, he's from Texas, he's from the Southwest, but his work is very different. He explores a lot of different ideas. And so I wanted, we, we talked about ways to tell his story and we came up with having a different people talk about him because I think in some ways they can, it's weird for him to talk about himself in some ways. So that's why we have these other folks and just trying to let people know he's kind of like a very like philosophical guy <laughs> and he works all the time. So one of the things I was thinking about when I was watching the other films is we don't have a lot of things about him hanging out because he really works all the time. And so anyway, but it's in, it's in waves of course. Now he's taking a break because he, that was his big show, this thing that he just did with all these, with the guy with the tattoos and all of that. But we just wanted to try to put him out there so people can kind of get a better sense of who he was um, in a way that hasn't been done before. There's been some people that have made films about him, but again, I think they, they try to put him in boxes and we're trying to break him outside of that box. Oh, I have one. Thank you. So, you know, uh, the indigenous perspective, right? Um, we come from a particular brand of indigeneity here, Bunky and I. Uh, you know, we come from communities that not even 100 years ago were getting massacred. Uh, none of my grandparents that were born were uh, American citizens. Uh, you know, we, we stand in a really strange spot in American history where as we spread our wings as artists and become more and more known in this new kind of um, multifaceted, uh, you know, kind of expansion of pop culture that we're still wrestling with the fact that we don't really have an American dream that's the same as other people. When you say brown people, that doesn't really mean what native people are th going through at any given moment. We're still, we're still living on our homelands that are being attacked by fracking corporations and um, being imprisoned and killed and murdered because of our natural resources that provide you know, a place like New York City with, you know, whatever it needs, you know. Um, so, you know, we're still very much living in kind of the gutter of American kind of like consumerism. And so from that lens, art is most important to us to be, cont if it's contemporary, then it's actually serving the purpose of the movement. Now, um, maybe this is my opinion, there's many other opinions. Uh, when I look at the idea of Western art and what's considered masterful, we don't really look at it as a two-dimensional acrylic thing on a wall. What we see is, you know, are there songs about us? Do we take care of our families? How well have we provided for our communities? Do we remember the people that have died for what we have here as Native people? Um, 
So being here and acknowledging the Lenape people and the indigenous people who we now stand on under concrete and rebar is most important to me and for us as artists. Bunky reflects that in his work and in his poetry. And I, you know, I was hesitant about letting anyone see this yet because it is a work in progress and we have temp tracks and B-roll and all of these issues. But if we don't put ourselves out here for you to see that, then when will you see it? When will you ever see it? And maybe you'll never see this when it comes on TV. Maybe this is the time that you'll see that. And so with every step as an action and every moment, uh, I always remember that they wanted to kill the warriors first so that they could have everything. And they still want our land. They still want our resources. So this, this is an action for us. And that's why I'm here. Just wondering, um, you know, what was the catalyst for you to agree to let these folks into your lives with their cameras and their questions? Uh, thank you. Yeah, for, for me, I think I, I kind of have to echo a lot of what, what Ben said. I think, uh, you know, when it comes to visibility, um, especially in mass media and movies, film, TV, um, Native people are not reflected. Um, you know, we make up 2% of the American population, yet we don't see that, that parody representation in film and movies. Like, we repre we're represented from 0% to, like, 0.5%, like, we're at peaks. Um, and when we are represented, uh, or depicted, I should say, in uh, film and TV, oftentimes it's depicted from uh, a perspective of historical value, where they focus on who we were maybe in the 1800s with little value on who we are today. So, you know, just following uh, Ben's work, you know, and the, um, you know, his artistic spirit and drive and um, everybody that was involved in, you know, in the production and moving forward, it's all about that uh, positive uh, contemporary representation. So for me, it was, it was a no brainer, like, yes, we gotta get some good content out there, you know, that, that'll kind of um, push the historical stuff behind. Not that there's no value, but we want to, uh, define our own value, you know. Thank you. Anik? Um, I did it because of these guys. So they look like me, they talk like me, they grew up like me, and that's hard to find. Like, it was a very parallel. Not as, at all, as much as yours, but, you know, from the immigrant perspective, you know, that there's a lot of similarities in that and having a voice. I remember growing up and seeing MTV2's My Block and seeing this man's name on the credits. And I was like, Patel. That's the first time I've seen that. And I was like 12. And so fast forward, I got to work with him. And anyone who looks like me can do whatever they want with me. It's fine. That's the criteria, right? Uh, you know, nothing about us without us, right? Um, which is part of the ethos of this series uh, across the board. Um, so I think we are at time uh, with that. And want to just uh, thank you for joining us tonight and say that because you got the sneak preview, we are going to ask that you become early uh, cheerleaders of this series so that when it does come to a phone in your lab or a computer screen near you uh, next year, you help us spread the word about it, okay? So masters in the making, you'll be supporting all of these amazing filmmakers and the artists that they are featuring in their films. Thank you. Thank you.